Here's something that might be seen as an obscure game even in the niche of C64 games, Gumshoe. And no, it has nothing to do with the game of the same title on the NES. This game we can call a Commodore 64 exclusive, made by a company called ANF, who also published the much more known classic Chucky Egg, with its protagonist Handhouse Harry, a man with a hat who looks remarkably similar to our Gumshoe character. Look at them, like two eggs. They might as well be brothers. In the game, Handhouse Harry's brother in blue is a private detective who was hired to rescue a millionaire's daughter from a tower block. Once he found the girl, he has to repeat the same thing nine more times because apparently this girl cannot exist without being kidnapped. Oh sweet, sweet damsel in distress troop. It might be wiser for a millionaire to provide protection instead of hiring a rescuer afterwards every single time, but after all, part of the beauty of old games is that they are not necessarily bound by common sense. Each tower is basically a maze of platforms that are connected by ladders, elevators and escalators and our object is to find the girl in this maze without being killed. The building is full of baddies in red uniforms strolling around and lurking behind doors in the background. These are armed people with a ridiculously bad trigger discipline, so much that they often shoot each other in the back. They're kinda dronish and predictable, so in case they shoot at us, we can use our superhuman reflexes and duck then shoot back. This may sound like they are not much of a threat in a gunfight, because that's right, much more dangerous is the prospect of engaging them in a brawl, which happens every time they manage to touch us. A brawl can result in us being victorious but also being killed, with a 50-50 chance. I used to wiggle around my joystick to be part of the effort, but I never knew if that helped in the least or I just damaged my joystick unnecessarily. A brawl can lock us helplessly in one place and can also escalate quickly with other baddies joining the fight or shooting into it. To avoid this we have to be mindful about situations when we can shoot and therefore are the most vulnerable. For example, getting from platform to platform can be tricky because we don't want to be sandwiched between two baddies when grabbing on ladders. Or riding an escalator, unfortunate timing can throw us right into the hands of the enemy. Or falling down one floor, we need a second or two to get back on our feet which might be enough time for us to get caught. Nevertheless, it's better than falling two floors, because then Gumshoe dies instantly. Each time we begin our search in a new tower, our starting point is always on the first floor of the building, but our damsel isn't necessarily on the top floor. Every tower has more than one possible places where she can be found, and sometimes, in later levels, she is placed somewhere inaccessible, unless we slide down through rubbish chutes. To put simply, rubbish chutes function like teleports, but since there's no apparent system in how they are connected to their exit point, aside from one being on a floor above the other, one can expect to scurry around trying to find the correct one. This can become quite a tedious ordeal that depletes the patience of the player and sucks the fun out of the game. Another unusual way to change floors is falling through trapdoors, which can also be used to access otherwise closed off areas. Using them could give us a moment of joy, because activating one of them activates every other one on the screen, making our enemies fall down haplessly when they happen to walk over one. Baddies are so inept, when Gumshoe happens to find who he came for, they immediately stop doing their job and enter into a weird state of collective panic where they appear to, well, I don't know, perhaps they're trying to crawl up the wall. This is, by the way, the only time in the game when we can hear a bit of music, which conveys not rejoicing for a job well done, but the disappointment of our foes. Oh come on guys, stop banging your heads to the walls! Realistically, the only thing I've done so far is half of a rescue. There's still time to turn this around! If you're so easily depressed, why even do this job? Go to a therapy or something. Anyways, aside from the sad little jingle we get, the only sound we will hear through the entire game is mostly the noise of doors opening and gunshots. And because I know the C64 is capable of much better, I consider sound the weakest aspect of Gumshoe. It's not like this game has exceptional visuals, but hell, a simple jazzy beat could add so much to the replayability of this game. And yes, many other games on the C64 lack musical tunes, I know that, but this one feels incomplete without one. 
I mentioned before that there are 10 towers to explore in the game, but after 10 successful rescues the game doesn't stop there. No celebration or anything, no sense of accomplishment, it just jumps right to the first tower, meaning the game becomes the damsel in distress trope times infinite. I'm usually okay with this. The game follows the old arcade model, where only the final score matters, but given the context of the story, I was looking forward to at least a bit of praise or announcement that I completed my mission. But no, it's an endless loop of the same thing until we die, which means that ultimately Gamshu cannot spend the money he made killing lower end bad guys and dodging bullets, so all of the earnings go to the family, I guess. I may sound complaining, but to be honest, I didn't care much about details like these when I was a kid and don't expect you to care either. Back then, it was fun playing this game because of its comical moments. I really enjoyed being surrounded by baddies and ducking down from their bullets so they end up shooting each other like the idiots they are. I also liked using trapdoors for the aforementioned reason, even to my own detriment. And I'm also digging the fact that the brawls look like they come from an old cartoon. Stuff like these I think are genuinely fun, but even so only personal nostalgia brings me to rate this game to like 3 out of 5. It's an okay game, but I know that playing a game long enough one can cultivate a personal connection to it that's not easy to shrug off. So I recommend you to play this game yourself if you can and form your own opinion about it. That is all.